So welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet Homesteading Series Episode 2. Today we're, as you can see behind me, we're out at the garden. And this is on my If brother. you watch my channel long enough, you know that we rely, rely heavily on uh, fresh vegetables, herbs, things like that that we're always using in our dishes to make them better, I say. Uh, always. The, if you could pick it yourself, grow it yourself, um, it's going to be way better and you're going to get way more satisfaction out of it. So previously this is what my brother was using for irrigation and uh, we have been talking about it for I don't know, probably this whole year about uh, upgrading the irrigation system in this garden so we could actually go and leave town and you know go on a trip or whatever and not worry about everything out here dying from lack of water so yesterday we started a giant project here so, so way back over behind the house by the burn pile can't even hardly barely see it from here but way back there over 500 feet away is the well so yesterday we rented a trencher and trenched a ditch through roots st old stumps uh hit an old water line we had to fix up there he forgot was there um got that done trenched it all the way out here trying to avoid his large beautiful trees so we don't hurt the roots and systems on those and now we have this trench and we've already laid one inch Minute. pipe so this is running up to the barn and then what we're going to do is a whole drip irrigation system and you can see some of the materials laying around that we have right now already just uh spent a gob of money on yesterday and so this morning what i'm doing is i'm building the manifold that's going to control the entire system as far as the drip goes so uh we want. have almost 750 feet of trench right now so it would have taken us a very long time to dig that by hand so that's another thing i want to tell you anytime you're going to do this make sure you call sunshine 811 or whoever the cable locates uh system is in your state and have your property located that way if you do hit something you're not responsible to have any have for the repair cost so we got that done here on this property too they uh they cleared it and all of our utilities are in the utility easement, which is basically... Click the subscribe button down below and hit the bell button. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks, guys. It has been a long day. But... I got this guy mounted temporarily anyway. And we got water all the way out to the garden. So we're just terminating those. We'll probably have to come back to pick greens. Back at the outdoor kitchen and you might can see I got my stocking hat on over my ball cap tonight and you may even see me pulling it down over my ears it's a bit chilly here and uh, good old FL uh, tonight so what we did we to went ahead and prepared those greens just like we did our mustard greens uh, uh, on our last video so if you missed that video I'm gonna leave you a card to it right up here and I'm going to leave you a link in the description box so you can see how we did that. Basically, just brown some uh, bacon, some onions, we chopped the greens, put them in there a little bit of time, kept turning them, cooked them for about an hour, hour and a half. With the turnip greens, I like to cook them just a little bit longer because you got the stems in there that need to be a uh, breakdown. These were really young greens, so that's uh, they should be perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do with them is we're going to put them in the Dutch oven now that they're done 
and we're gonna make some cornbread right on top of the greens so don't even touch that mouse or click that screen So over here on our Lodge Dutch oven table, we got the 12-inch uh, Lodge Dutch oven that's standing by, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside for a minute. And uh, tonight we're using B and B charcoal. If you didn't catch our uh, review where we compared uh, three different kinds of all hardwood charcoal, I'll leave you a link below or just go to our channel page and check it out you know so many people ask us about to do this or that or the other video that we've already covered in some cases several times uh, covered it and recovered it even recently well I'll tell you what on a nice cool night that B&B charcoal right there really uh, is putting off a lot of heat okay all right, so let's get old. What we're going to do right now is just preheat the bottom, and I've done my one line method that uh, I like to when I need bottom heat. I use that one line method. Tonight, I'm going to go ahead and just set the lid aside. So what we're going to be using first is one uh, is bottom heat, and this one line method allows you know because that oven's close to the coal, it's going to allow. Uh, well, what the oven's going to do is kind of choke some of the airflow down to them coals and they're going to kind of start to diminish. But as soon as they do, we can just slide it over, get it on these nice fresh ones over here. Plus they're lending some radiant heat to the side of this oven. We can keep rotating, get a little bit more heat in it that way also. All right, so what I got here is bacon. What I have on hand tonight is ends and pieces, okay? Use what you got. I'm just going to dump them in there. I need quite a bit of this and I need it all to be crisped up. So I'm going to use what I had left here. I'm doing the greens. And this is very lean too, this, uh, these ends and pieces. So, getting it all over the place here. I'll just go use what I had left there. And it's so lean, I actually might have to give it a little shot of oil. You probably won't. And after it gets going in there a little bit, I'm going to just keep separating it out. I'm going to do something tonight that we haven't never done on uh, the Back with Squirmy channel. With this. Alright, so we'll let that get moving along there. Show you what, how long we're going to help crisping that up. But you see how hot that pot got really fast there on that B&B. Uh, that &B. It's, it's only been on there for literally about six minutes. And she is ready to cook. It's going to be the first Dutch oven cook we've done with B&B charcoal. And I know I'm going to have to adjust uh, by volume like we do with campfire cooking because those coals are so much bigger than your normal charcoals like Kingsford some of the others all I want to do right now is try to try to lay that bacon out in a kind of a single layer What I'm going to use on her this evening is a bacon press. This is a generic one. Lodge does make one. I will try to leave you a link to, I think the Lodge one is a lot heavier than this. If I remember, I think I picked it up in the stores before. Um, this one's kind of thin, but I'm going to go ahead and we'll keep that moving around in there because I want that bacon to be nice and flat. So as you might can hear a little bit, the fire has already started to die on me a little bit because of the pots choking the air out to it. So now we're going to move it over to the other side of the coals and with just in a few minutes 
you'll feel that you're here the sizzle come back up so I will use this one line method just about there looking about right you want it crispy not burnt and flat and you're gonna see why in just a minute all right we got nice bottom heat going on use that one line method started cooling down the first location I moved it right over to the second location and we're gonna do that again because what's gonna happen next is we're gonna put in our turnip greens All right, and that's going to raise the pond we wanted it hot when we put it in there because we want to raise that bacon pond we want just enough of our what a lot of folks call pot liquor that's what we call it down here most of the south the pot liquor you get pot liquor from greens beans and all kinds of different vegetables that are fresh these are fresh. You just seen us picking them, guys, this morning. So I ain't never seen a freezer or anything like that. And I want just enough of the pot liquor on them or in them to come right up just below the surface of the greens. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flatten them out while they're getting up to they're coming up to a bowl or simmer. you can see that that, uh, that killed a little bit of our heat in the pot but these coals on this side have had a chance now to recover so we'll go ahead and move it over there and she'll come right back up to the simmer pretty quick all right so back with gourmet style I'm gonna come in with something you probably have never seen I know I haven't but if you've watched our channel for any amount of time and, I, and this so this a uh, very good time to subscribe if you haven't been following along with us for the last uh, since 2009 so going on 2021 will be 12 years on YouTube showing you outdoor cooking and out uh, campfire Dutch ovens cast iron you know, all of our cast iron collection um, and all the catch clean and cook and all the other stuff that we've been doing all these years we're going to go right over top of that that layer of bacon and that's why we wanted it flat so you see that's up to a simmer those greens were still pretty warm when we put them in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and take all the bottom heat, push it to the side. We don't need any bottom heat. The greens are already done. Everything in that pot's done right now. So here's where we're going to throw a little bit of backwards gourmet at you. All right. So what we've done here is we made a cornbread mix. I made this one from scratch. I would encourage you to use your favorite one. Okay, uh, this was from Dixie Lily, and I followed the directions on the bag for the Dixie Lily cornbread. And I, except for the only thing I deviated from, I used half as much water because I wanted to be a little stiffer, and I also put in a teaspoon of garlic because I thought it would go great with this. So we have our cornbread mix all ready to go there and you can see it's not soupy like you would put in your iron skillet I want to be able to drop these out right on top of those greens and bacon I'm gonna do that now so all I'm gonna do is take the heating tablespoons of my stiff cornbread mix start off going right around the edges right on top of the bacon try to make little mounds Try to keep 
keep them all kind of uniform if possible. So now we're ready to bake. Coming over with our lid right on top there. So we scooted it all the way out the poles. Now we're going to take as many coals as we can get to fit on top of this lid, especially due to the fact that it is in the low 40s here right now. And that that lid was not preheated. Okay. Now you could try preheating your lid if you'd like, but anybody knows this cooked cornbread in the past, cooking in the oven, it cooks like 450. So we want to try to get close to that as we can. Be honest with you, I was afraid this wasn't going to work with this first set of charcoals that we put on. I mean, they feel still blazing hot, but uh, the temperature dropped like a rock about 10 degrees here in the last 30 45 minutes. It's been going about 45 minutes. Let's go in and take a look at her. All right, I'm saying that's about as good as it's going to get right there. So let's go ahead and service up a nice uh, helping of this. This is turnip greens and with bacon and cornbread. All right, and we still got plenty of that juice down in the bottom there. We're gonna have to get some of that on there. You know, you got that cornbread. You're gonna need some some of that juice to sop up with it. I'll tell you what, guys. For camp cooking in a Dutch oven, that looks pretty daggum good. You want a bite of that, I know you do. It's still steaming hot and I better get on it right now before it's not steaming hot anymore. We need to get this in the house. Get some of the cornbread and the greens and we gotta get some of that pot liquor. Tell you what, nothing goes better on a nice cool night, like some fresh turnip greens with some cornbread. So if you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there. To subscribe to our channel, you can do right here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right over here. And for our whole playlist, Cast Iron Dutch Oven Cooking, going to be right up there. We'll see you next time. And hopefully it's warmer. <laughs>